I won't lie, sometimes reviewing beers can be a really, really tedious task. Uh, this is take five, and it's nearly took the best part of half an hour to get to this point. Um, the beer's pretty much half gone, and it's a 500ml bottle, and um, yeah, just everything's working against me today, so I'm just going to get straight into it. Today's beer, as you can tell by the title, is the Directionless Pale Ale from Red Willow, which is a brewery in Cheshire. This is the Pale Ale, coming in at 4.2%. Uh, picked this up from Marks and Spencers while I was back in England. And um, yeah, I've said it a couple of times now, really, really pleasantly surprised with some of the beers you can pick up in. Not just Marks and Spencers, but in supermarkets in general. Uh, when I'm back in England, I don't really have much time. So I'll always go to like places like supermarkets to buy some beers to review. And uh, yeah, went into Marks and Spencers and I bought like six beers for like just under £11. And they were all beers that I've never tried before from breweries that I've heard a lot of good things about. And uh, yeah, it's just that range for people nowadays in the supermarkets. I know the elitists will always say, oh, well, just buy beers online from specialty shops or go to bottle shops. But I don't always have the time to do that. And, you know, by the time I've ordered, I've, I'm going to have to either order a crate before I go back to England. So then I've got pressure to get them all drink, drunk or I'm not going to have enough time to have something delivered to me and I don't really have the time or money to go to like somewhere like Beer Moth in Manchester or the Ship and Anchor if I think that's what it's called in Liverpool so I like to make the most of what I've got plus I'm the clueless shrinker so I'm more catered towards the people who are trying to get into real ales and craft beer um, even though I've had such a great response from seasoned drinkers and people who actually know what they're doing and actually brew themselves so, um, yeah, but when I'm back in England, time and funds are limited. So I make the best of what I've got, and that's nine times out of ten. It's the local supermarket. But anyway, the Red Willow um, Pale Ale. Really like the design on the label. Nice and bold. Love the Red Willow logo. And the crown is really nice as well. So I will be keeping that for the collection. But yeah, the bottle's nice. Uh, beer in a glass. It's, you know, a nice hazy amber beer. This is a bottle condition beer, but you don't really get too much sediment in there. There is quite a bit of carbonation going on, even though this is pretty much at room temperature now, and it's been out for about half an hour. Uh, but the head, it seems to have stayed like that, and it's almost like the head, it reminds me of the head that you get on like a, a creamy bitter or a Guinness. It's really stayed, you know, hold, held its own. Uh, but yeah, nice amber, burnt orange, marmalade sort of tones with some nice golden hints at the bottom. So it's a pretty looking beer. But the beer loses points when it comes to the aroma and then loses more points when it comes to the sniff, uh, to the taste. On the sniff, I hate to say it, but the more I'm smelling it, the more I'm getting this vibe. It sort of smells like washing up liquid. It's got that soapy sort of aroma. You are picking up slight grapefruit tones. You are picking up very slight orangey, maybe lemony, zesty sort of aroma. And I've said it a few times now. I'm getting that like sensation of like rancheries fruit pastel. You know, the candied sort of um, jelly sweet sort of vibe. And I'm also getting like Haribo, where you've got the jelly sweet and the mallow bit on the bottom of it. I'm getting that sort of aroma, but it's really not punchy at all. And there are slight malty notes as well, but not too much. Uh, yeah, on the sniff, it's really quite uneventful, but it's got enough presence where you're like, oh, I'll still give it a taste, even though you know you could have a foul smelling beer, and I'll still try it. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna completely shut a beer down because of its reputation or because of how it smells or looks. But anyway, let's give it a taste. Cheers. Yeah, there's really not too much going on in terms of flavour. And I am getting that like soapy water, you know, hand soap sort of flavour. It is quite watery actually. Um, it's not, you know, water-like, but it's like you've had a fizzy drink that's gone you know, it, you've just left it in the glass for like an hour and it's quite flat, like fizzy water when it's uh, gone a bit flat. Uh, 
but unlike fizzy water you don't actually taste like the carbonation um you don't get any of that with this but the body there's really no body there it's really it's not even like a light body it's just really got no body it's just like a very thin liquid sort of vibe uh but yeah that bitterness it goes all the way through and um for my palate it is ever so slightly unpleasant but not to the point where i have to pour the beer away i could happily finish this one and if i had three or four bottles i could happily drink them but there's really not much going on with this beer at all and it's definitely not the best pale ale that i've ever had uh ever so slightly above average to give it credit this would be the perfect beer when it comes to spring or summer you're in the garden um you're with family and friends and you just want a beer to accompany that you don't really want a beer that will yeah you'll drink it and then everything else around you will cease to exist because you're concentrating on the beer it's just perfect social beer uh perfect to have in the background that sort of thing to accompany a situation but if you just want to sit there and analyze the beer and just pick up on those flavors and stuff you're really not going to get too much there so it's a six out of ten from me from this one I was expecting a little bit more from this, um, I won't lie. But yeah, it's it's definitely not the best pale ale that I've tried, but it's also not the worst that I've tried. Uh, so yeah, Red Willow's uh, Directionless Pale Ale. Quickly read you what it says on the blurb. Uh, Curious Beast, candied orange and grapefruit hops, blend, balanced precariously over a full-bodied biscuity malt, sliding into a clean, crisp finish. It's got that clean, crisp finish, I am picking up those ever so slight candied orange and grapefruit tones, but that full bodied biscuity malt, really not picking that up at all. Um, maybe something happened in the travelling from uh, England back to Germany? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I don't like to be completely negative um, to breweries like, you know, uh, Red Willow because they're not. You know, a soulless conglomerate like you know AB and Bev or like Coors, Miller, um, Carling, Carlsberg, Cellar Artois. Uh, you could tell that there's hard work gone into this one, but unfortunately, I'm really not digging it. Um, I'll happily finish off the bowl. In fact, I'm you know pretty much finished anyway. Uh, but yeah, I can't really recommend it too much. Uh, maybe to the people who are trying to get into real ales, give it a try. Um, you could do a hell of a lot worse. Let's leave it like that. So if you've tried this beer, don't have to voice, then let me know your thoughts and opinions. Have I completely missed the point with this one? What am I not picking up? Uh, what's your favourite um, Red Willow beer? I have to keep looking at it. I've said it so many times, I've forgotten it, if that makes any sense. Uh, what's your favourite Red Willow beer? What's your favourite beer that Marks and Spencer do? Uh, what's your favourite pale ale? Um, just hit me with comments and your thoughts and opinions. Uh, Check out the Pale Ale playlist down below, subscribe to the channel, and yeah, until the next beer review, I shall see you all later. Cheers.